Welcome to the Talkback. This is episode four. Uh, I'm Chris from aesthetics.com. Uh, before we get to the panel, I just want to remind you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It's going to help us keep making more videos and having more of these Talkbacks. So let's go ahead and meet our panel. We have uh, returning Nate Thomas. Hey, Nate. Hey, how's it going? We have Mike Gould. Hey, Mike. Hi. And Matt McElroy, who, when we last saw him, was working for the Vegas Golden Knights, but has since taken on a new role elsewhere. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm with the Ontario Reign now. Um, I'm the senior manager of marketing and creative, so kind of a bit of a promotion for me and uh, kind of going back to my roots. I actually started my pro hockey career with the Reign, so it's, it's great to be back in California and with the team and uh, happy to get, get going with those guys. And it's great to have you back on the show, too. Um, so let's get started. The last time we had an episode, uh, we had Dallas and Justin on, and then in the week between taping the show and posting it to YouTube, three more jerseys were released in the NHL that we didn't get a chance to talk about. And the first one will be the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins' new third jersey, which is kind of a throwback uh, to the early 90s. Nate, why don't you get us started? What are your thoughts on the new Penguins' third? Uh, I really like it. I mean, it is a little bit too, I feel like, similar in a way to what they currently have. I'm not a huge fan of third jerseys being the same as their home jerseys unless you have something that really sets them apart i feel like but you know unless you're really paying attention i think to the sleeves or that you take a look at the back of that jersey especially and it looks the same so i think it works uh it, it's great as like a throwback jersey type thing but i do think um they maybe made a bit of a mistake in my opinion moving away from a yellow jersey which as bright as that was it was something different for the team I would say that it's been so long since we've seen the Penguins try something new. Um, feels like every single one of their alternates for the last 10 years has been some derivation of something that they wore 30, 40 years ago, which, I mean, I don't mind. I like seeing teams doing throwbacks, but at the same time, feels like there could be some interesting avenues to go forward with the Penguins where you could try something a little bit different. That being said... If they were going to go throwback, I feel like they missed an opportunity because one of my favorite Penguins jerseys that they've ever worn um, was the one that Mario Lemieux wore on the cover of NHL 2002, uh, the Robo Penguin jersey. And it's just such a different design. It's, it was such a departure when it came out. And I can understand if maybe the organization doesn't like it very much. But personally, for me, I have a soft spot for gradients. And uh, <laughs> seeing the front of that jersey back in the NHL again, I think, especially Sidney Crosby wearing it, uh, passing the torch on from Lemieux, I think would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think I kind of, you know, I'm singing the same song you guys are. Um, it's by no means a bad jersey, right? Like it, it's well executed. Adidas always does a good job with recreating these sort of classic looks. But uh, it feels like somebody really liked the reverse retro during that process. And they said, you know what? We're not allowed to bring this back as an alternate. So we're just going to do we're going to do what we did originally, um, which is fine. You know, I think that there's a place for that. But I don't know if if I'm the marketing director of the Penguins, I I would promote it to my third jersey because I think there's ways for them to work in, you know, throwbacks into their rotation. And that's a good point. Like, I, I'm not personally a fan of teams just doing straight throwbacks for their third jerseys, um, but we are seeing it a lot more. And I mean, even the jersey hanging up behind you, Matt, the, the new uh, Kings third jersey, it's not a direct throwback, but it's definitely hinting at that. I'd love to hear what you guys think on the idea of teams using third jerseys, uh, throwbacks as their third jerseys more often these days. The big difference between this Kings jersey and and their heritage jersey, which is, like you said, very similar to this, is they moved forward with this. You know, it, it's not a drastic departure by any means, and I don't think it needs to be. I think that uh, if you're going to do a third jersey and you want to pay homage to your previous looks, there's nothing wrong with that. But just a carbon copy of something that's really popular doesn't make sense. I think that just means you should have probably stayed with that look. And I think the Coyotes are kind of a prime example of that. They're like, oh, you know, maybe we should have just done this all along. If the NHL decides, you know, every other year we're going to wear a uh, reverse retro one year and we're going to wear throwback jerseys as our fourth jersey program, I think that would be a great solution because then, you know, it's infrequent enough that people are still interested they want to buy the jerseys but it's often enough that you can count on seeing some of those classic robo penguins or you know the burger king jersey or you know whatever your favorite jersey tm is it'll it'll make its way back and and you'll have the option to buy it what i would say is when it comes to throwbacks 
if you're going to make it a third jersey, I think it is most effective when it isn't super similar to the jersey that you're already wearing as your primary. And that's what we're seeing with the Penguins. That's what we saw with the Flames uh, when they had their retro jersey as their alternate, when they were already wearing a Flaming C jersey on a on a red background, basically, with their Black C jersey. Um, but the difference is now, when the Flames were wearing uh, Blasty as their reverse retro jersey last season, it was a throwback, but it was so different that it felt like something new and something fresh because we hadn't seen a black jersey in Calgary in 15 years. So even though it was a throwback, it was something that didn't feel like it was a retread. Um, whereas with the Penguins wearing that script, it feels like something that we've seen because we did see it last year. But also seeing a, a, a throwback jersey that's so similar to their current jersey, it feels like the, something we've seen so much before. I think, Mike, you make a great point there is like a, a prime example of what I think you're talking about is uh, the Winnipeg Jets current alternate jersey. You know, it is a throwback jersey, but it's not one to one, right? Like they introduce their current color scheme into it. Their regular jerseys have very little. I would venture to say no red other than the logo. So having all that red, it, it creates a completely different look, even though it's very on brand for the Jets. Yeah, the Jets ones is one of my favorites because it does kind of it it walks that line right of being a throwback but also being something new, right? Um, I have one of those in my in my collection, the last Heritage Classic. That's now the alternate, I guess, the dark based one, and uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful jersey, and yeah, it just kind of walks that line perfectly, I think. And Nate, you're in kind of a, the Anaheim Ducks world, and they do an interesting thing with their third jersey, which is that it's kind of a throwback logo, but the colors, the whole jersey you know, is, is something fresh and new. Yeah, exactly. And that's a Jersey that, uh, you know, from the players themselves, Trevor Zegris in an article in the athletic had just, you know, touched on, he's that, he's like that orange Jersey is one of, uh, the players favorites and, or at least his favorite, at least. And a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of fans have been talking about that lately as well of this is the Jersey that they want, uh, to see a bit more, right? Purely for I think that Anaheim Ducks or the like the Mighty Ducks logo, right? It's a nostalgia factor, and you know I might have some pushback here from Matt, knowing that uh, he was at that Stanley Cup win, but you know even the I think people have kind of grown to accept the colors a little bit more, but th I feel from what I'm gathering, at least online, is people would like a return to the original Mighty Ducks uh, look, right? Of the eggplant and jade and that sort of thing. When they did when when they won the Stanley Cup in 2007, wearing you know the black, copper, orange, it was only a year removed from the eggplant and jade that everybody knows and loves, and is still a collector's item to this day. Um, but I think if the uh, Samueli family, who owns the Anaheim Ducks, could do anything to help appease the fan base, it would be moved back to that Mighty Ducks logo full time. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I go to a lot of Ducks games. They're they're right down the road from us. So it, the orange jersey is popular with the fans. I'd say only second to the original jersey. Um, and I think it's because people love the Mighty Ducks logo. And and I, I think you're right. I think if they could bring back the, the eggplant and jade, that, that would be huge for the Ducks. And I think we've proven, I mean, I did it in my identity concept. And there's concepts on online all the time that there's a way to make the orange work with the eggplant and jade. And I know, you know, the Samuelis really want to be Orange County's team. Having orange is really important to them. And, um, you know, there's no reason in my eyes they couldn't couldn't make that all all work together, whether it's in a third to sort of tie it back to what we're talking about or as their their primary look. I like having orange in theory, and um, I I have no comment on the orange Anaheim Ducks jersey, except to say that I think it belongs in 2004. But um, <laughs> I like the logo, and I love eggplant and jade as a color combination, because it's something that we just don't see in the NHL. It's, it's a combination that would be totally different if they brought it back. Um, that particular jersey I'm not a huge fan of, but I agree with Matt, and there is definitely a way to make orange work there with their original colors, I think. I like that we can always count on Mike for sort of an alternate perspective. I think that that's a, a good thing that you bring to the show. And on that subject, you know, I kind of want to switch gears now and get into the stadium series, the Nashville Predators and Tampa Bay Lightning. Got the Predators over my shoulder there for this. Uh, they're going to be playing in the outdoor game at Nissan Stadium. And their jerseys are definitely different. I mean, the stadium series is always kind of out there, but these kind of take it to a new level. Um, Mike, share your perspective on that first. Why don't we start with you? 
I'll get started in saying that I, I, I really like Tampa Bay's jerseys. Um, I, I like the bolt pattern along the waist. I'm not sure if there's a way that maybe they could integrate that into the pants some way, but um, make it sort of continue down there. But I like it the way it is. Nashville's is interesting to me. It's very interesting. There's a lot of elements that are very just that's all, that's the only word I can use is interesting. The thing that immediately stood out to me when I was looking at it is the numbers on the back. They 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 modeled it with somebody wearing the number 22 and I couldn't help but notice that the two twos on the back of the jersey are different shapes, um, which is something that I don't think we've ever seen on an NHL jersey before. And I understand the concept behind it, but I thought the execution looked really strange. Yeah, I gotta gotta agree and disagree at the same time here. I'm gonna start with the Tampa one. I was I was honestly really glad, Chris, watching your interview with Phil Esposito, where he's not a fan of the Bolts word mark. I'm not a fan of that either. And I was a little disappointed to see that on this jersey, honestly. I thought they could have done, uh, you know, even just the, the logo that they have now would have looked great, I think, on this jersey and uh, just looked better, I think. Um but the rest of the jersey, I agree, it looks it looks pretty good actually, and it's it's great for the stadium series as well, right? Where those are the jerseys that really try to venture into something a little bit different, and it's the same with the Nashville jersey as well. It's it's kind of it's a jersey that's almost there, but the Smashville logo on the front that has all the different uh, sizing of uh, of the letters and that sort of thing, it's it's not appealing, right? Uh, right away to the eye and if it's something that you have to explain in order to get people on board then I think you've kind of missed the mark a little bit there yeah I think I'd sort of say the same thing just start with Tampa because that's the easy one right like I love Tampa's jersey I, I've never been a fan of the Bolts um, I think I've I've been on record saying that but I think they made it work with the modifications to the typeface that they did because it feels more like a bolt of lightning. And I think for a stadium series game, that's where you can get away with the nicknamey kind of modern stuff because that's the whole idea is, you know, pushing what a traditional jersey is. So I think maybe I'm a little bit more me uh, lenient than I normally would be. Um, but I do kind of agree that it might have been cool if they just did a big lightning bolt across the front, you know, like. Uh, looking at the Avs and the Kings Stadium Series jersey from the Air Force Academy game, you know, that was sort of the vibe they were going for. And obviously Adidas doesn't want to to just recycle their ideas every year. They're trying to do something new. I totally get that. But, you know, just as an altered, and I'm sure they looked at that. And Nashville, you know, I, I'll be honest, my initial reaction was negative. I, I did not like it. I don't like Smashville on the front. I, I get it. That's very important to their brand. And I do not live in Nashville. I've never been there. And I've only briefly talked with the folks over in their creative department. So I, I have a very limited sense of what goes on there. But to me, it, 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 it won't make sense to anybody who's not a hockey fan. And, you know, as we try and grow the brand into a global kind of game and the NHL into a global market, it, it feels very local. But they're hosting this event. It's in Nashville. They're trying to pay homage to their city with the, you know, hat show poster inspired font. And that's where all the wonky numbers come from. And, you know, Nate, like you said, like it, it needs to be explained. And I know we've already sort of talked about this, like where it, it comes from in the typeface of all these old rock and roll and country posters. But uh, it definitely, I don't think will land to a, a larger audience, but maybe that's not what they want. You know, I, I haven't, like I said, I don't talk to anybody in Nashville. So I don't know if people in Nashville are like, wow, this really represents us. This is our city's culture and our history. And it's really coming through. And you know, I'd be curious to hear what the people of Smashville think about uh, the jersey. I'm gonna have to get somebody from uh, from Nashville on this show at some point, probably now. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, you know, the other big outdoor game, of course, is always the Winter Classic. That's Minnesota and St. Louis. And um, yeah, and I'm curious to get your feedback on the jerseys for that game as well. Um, Matt, why don't you get us started there? Yeah, I um, I think this is going to be a really good looking winter classic uh, just to start off. I think Minnesota had a lot of hate out of the gate for it, but I love that right away. Um, it's weird. There's a lot of weird stripes, but that is what is, you know, evokes the 1920s, 1930s era. Like they weren't thinking through and laying everything out in Illustrator. They were just slapping lines on a jersey and somebody's wife sewed the crests on and it was kind of just a hodgepodge of things and if 
you know, the Wild were around then and had worn these jerseys, you bet your bottom dollar that every person would love this jersey and say, why don't we wear the 20s jersey? It's so different. And look at all these unique quirks and the C patch is so small. Like, why isn't that, you know, here anymore? And I think that Adidas and, and the Wild organization did a great job of replicating these unique features that, you know, like the Buffalo Sabres mismatch stripe, like that would never happen today, but it is, it is integral to the Sabres Jersey and they, people love that. So now when we try and manufacture that, I guess it feels inauthentic to fans. I I'm not sure what the reason for the hate is, but I personally loved it. And you know, the blues are wearing the same Jersey they wore last time, which is people love that Jersey. It was their alternate, you know, it was super successful. I love cream jerseys. So you know, would I have liked them to do something maybe a little different? Sure, but I totally get why they're wearing the other version of their previous Winter Classic jersey. And I think that it's a great look. I think they are going to look great on the ice. I love the wild brown equipment. Um, you know, I think I had been wanting that forever. I was super happy to see Dallas do it. And I'm glad to see that um, their weird brother from back home is, uh, is keeping that tradition alive. Yeah, I can. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the St. Louis one because that's really the the least amount to say, right? It's it is a great looking jersey. I have the uh, you know the last Winter Classic just above my shoulder here. If I can point to it, if I can figure that out, um, yeah, it, it's pretty similar to what I was thinking that they would go for as well. Just kind of a, a white version of this heritage or of this Winter Classic jersey. Can you tell I'm Canadian? I keep going to Heritage Classics. <laughs> uh, the the Minnesota one has grown on me a little bit more. I still have my couple of issues with it. Uh, the one is the kind of the, the elbow pads. Uh, I, I, I understand with the times though, that that's just not a me personally thing, but I understand the history behind it. So I can get with it in that respect. And the only other thing that's really, that still throws me off when I look at that Jersey is that stripe that goes along the top of the chest. That's just an area where it didn't quite work. I think if they just raise that up a little bit to be, you know, just below the collar, kind of like touching it um, or like just kind of going through it even, um, it would have looked a lot better to me. But other than that, yeah, that jersey has definitely grown on me a lot more. So just those those couple of nitpicky things for me, that's it. I'll start with St. Louis too. Um, I love the concept of the jersey, but it harkens back to some other winter classic jerseys that I've seen in terms of the main color, which I call those types of off-white jerseys oatmeal jerseys because they're just <laughs> they're just not. I, I don't like that. I, I just give me a white jersey. I don't like the off-white, um, but that's just a personal preference for me. It's designed beautifully, um, and I'm sure it's going to look great on the ice. But that's just a preference thing. Nate's right, though. The big one to talk about is the Minnesota one. And honestly, I've had my opinion on this one change so much, but I, at this point, have no complaints with it. Uh, I think the all the little old-timey quirks uh, are fantastic. The execution of the elbow patches, I actually think, looks great. Um, and the way that it ties into the, the brown equipment, I mean, that stuff's awesome. I, I, I have no issues really looking at this jersey. I mean, isn't like all the cresting made out of felt? Like that's, that's perfect. That's such a good touch. For me, obviously the Wild are a relatively new team. Not a whole lot of in-team history to go back on, but you can tell that it was just, it was created out of so many different elements put together with thinking of old time hockey and, and it really shines through for me. So. I'm excited to see it on the ice. The one thing that I don't love is when fans are going to buy replicas, all those little quirks might not show through so well because, you know, it's just part of the manufacturing process. But for the on-ice jerseys, it's going to look great, and I'm excited to see them. One thing Mike and I can agree on, though, beige jerseys have no place in the league as far as I'm concerned. So. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's a hot take. <laughs> you know, I think it's one of those things that, you know, if you're talking about a jersey that's aged, you know, when you see them hanging up in the Hall of Fame, that's what they look like now, but back then, I, I don't think that was a look they were originally going for. But that kind of brings us to the Heritage Classic, and, and Nate, you kind of evoked that. The jerseys haven't been released yet, um, but just a quick take from each of you. Um, what are you hoping to see from each of them? Nate, why don't you start? Uh, I think the easiest place is to, is to go to Buffalo and... Uh, they kind of touched into this last year with the reverse retro jerseys, but people want to go back to the goat head. 
uh, if, that, if that's that's the name I know of that logo at least. And you know, as much as they've moved back to the royal, uh, like the royal blue and yellow, which looks amazing, um, I think you know the return to the black, silver, and red jersey uh, would be a bit of a missed opportunity here for this winter classic. Even if you wanted to kind of do a reverse retro thing again and make it to like a blue and yellow base, I don't think you'd have a whole lot of arguments, honestly. Uh, Toronto, they've done so many different things as well, just over the course of. Uh, the last few years even, right? They've gone back to the Toronto arenas for a bit. They got the St. Patrick's. Um, I feel like the one area that could feel kind of relevant and similar to St. Louis, where you're kind of doing the opposite of what you have already, is doing a green version, uh, Toronto St. Patrick's jersey. So, uh, And that would definitely be one that would just get snagged instantly by many Toronto fans, I believe. Something that I always love to see for these outdoor games is sort of recreating matchups and jerseys from similar time periods. And one thing that I would like to see is the Leafs and the Sabres had a bit of a rivalry in the late 90s. Uh, They made it to the Eastern Conference Final where they played against each other and Buffalo won. Um, And so I would like to see just a recreation of the jerseys that were worn in that series. Um, The Leafs at the time had sort of that pointed leaf that was actually in the cabinet behind me, but that's not the one that I want to see them use. I want to see them use the one from the late nineties that sort of had all the rounded numbers and the sort of the padding or the shading under the arms. And it it was sort of a weird Jersey to look at, but I think it looks pretty cool actually. And um, the Sabres, I think Nate hit it right on the head, go back to that black Jersey, Um, you know, have it sort of look like it's a Dominic Hasek versus Matt Sundin type of thing. I think that'd be a really cool aesthetic. Yeah, I think I'm sort of right there with you guys. I actually was at a Kings uh, Sabres game a couple weeks ago and I saw a kid. I don't ever condone Chinese knockoffs. He was wearing a knockoff of an Adidas, uh, like an Adi Zero Royal Blue, you know, Hashikara goat head jersey. And I was like, that's sick. Like I I would be here for it. I think that would be great. Um, I also... I'm the only person in the world who loves the Buffalo Slug logo. I think those jerseys were really cool. Um, I doubt it, it doesn't feel heritage classic to me, but it, I would like to see that come back maybe in, in some way. But, uh, you know, Eric Bottomer over at Adidas, he's a Buffalo boy. Uh, he will not lead them astray. So I'm not worried about Buffalo one bit. I think Toronto is actually the really the more interesting of the two options because they have played in so many outdoor games. They, you know, they've got a hundred year history, but they're, they've started to kind of use up all their options. Uh, so you, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Toronto go with something they haven't worn before that. It just evokes the heritage classic feel um, kind of similar to what Montreal did. I think in their last um, game, it was sort of a faux back amalgam of several different uh, jerseys. They were one thing that we haven't seen Toronto do that I really like is they actually had red light um like toronto maple leafs in their cresting um i forget when that was i think it was the 40s but uh, i'd like to see that i think that would be different and cool and you know they could wear their regular jerseys with that and to me that would be enough so we'll switch gears again going into the all-star game now that's happening uh, at the beginning of february we don't have jerseys yet at the time of this recording but they're they've got to be coming soon i would think i wanted you guys to talk about your either hopes predictions uh whatever for the the new all-star jerseys uh, happening in Vegas and then, and maybe what you liked about recent years and things like that. Uh, Nate, why don't you get us started on that one? Uh, Yeah, sure. I would like to see us go back to the division jerseys specifically, right? Like as much as, you know, it's, it's nice to have the different crests of each team that each guy plays for. It does just kind of make it feel like when you see it on a store shelf, it just feels like an an alternate or a one off kind of thing for that team. It doesn't necessarily feel as much like an all star jersey to me besides, you know, the the all star patch on the shoulder or on the chest kind of thing. So I'd like to see a return to even like just the NHL logo or, you know, make a crest of, say, the Pacific Division, the Atlantic Division, that kind of thing. I kind of miss the days when the all star game jerseys were all super colorful. It feels like in the last few years, it's just sort of been a little bit more muted, which I'm not a huge fan of. I, I kind of missed the days actually um, where the NHL actually went color on color in the All-Star game. I thought that was kind of cool. And that's something that I'd like to see them maybe branch back into again. And I agree with Nate. I would like to see them maybe ditch the the logo, the team logo on the crest is the one that I have. Um, I, I kind of liked seeing them all look the same. Um 
But yeah, it's it's going to be tough in terms of a color scheme for them to go super colorful in Vegas because Vegas's main color is sort of a, a gray. Um, but I'm not sure if it needs to be tied to the team's color, the host team's color scheme that much. And I don't know. I feel like the the All Star Game jerseys should be maybe the wildest ones that we see in a given season. And in recent years, it hasn't really felt like that. Yeah, I think uh, I would not be ready for the NHL logo to come back. I think the reason they did that is because uh, jerseys with the NHL logo don't sell in pro shops. You know, like that was always a problem is at the end of the season, there's a bazillion all-star game jerseys left over and you can't sell it. But, you know, those ones you're wearing now, Mike, uh, at the Arsenal at City National Arena, you know, back in Vegas, those jerseys sold out really quick. And and it, you're right, it is kind of just an alternate, you know, another chance to buy your team's branding. And I think the league and the teams really like that because it's a lot easier um, to sell. As far as what I'd like to see for this year, shiny gold versus shiny silver, uh it, it just crazy like you said i think the all-star game is a great um chance to do something wild um, my favorite ones are uh the last time it was in uh, montreal where they sort of had the atlanta thrasher style one sleeve was one way and one sleeve was the other but then both jerseys next to each other made a uh, one scene and then some of the original uh reebok edge ones not the first one but uh the they were like two tone blue with the NHL shield on it. And they had crazy lines under the arms. Like I really liked that sort of stuff. And I, I hope they'd go back to something um, more in those veins, kind of pushing the envelope forward. When it comes to the shiny gold and the shiny silver, we have the avenues to do that now because the shiny gold and the shiny silver fabrics are both here. And we have the shiny gold and the shiny silver helmets, which I don't love in normal competition. I know Matt's been heavily involved with both of those, but um, you know, I think for an all-star game, that would be the perfect environment to have that sort of thing. It'd be perfectly wild. And uh, that'd be something that I'd be all for. That's a great idea. Yeah. I think we need helmet stripes. That's like the next frontier. Uh, <laughs> like nobody's done that. And it's not like it doesn't need to be crazy. What one thin stripe going down your helmet? It'd be cool. It's the future. Watch out, boys. The uh, the other thing that I kind of think to is, uh, you know, with Vegas, they have such a great color palette that you can do those, you know, color on color, crazy color type things that Mike is talking about. Right. You guys like you guys said, you guys can have a gold jersey. You can have uh, another, another another red jersey, I think. Uh, you could do a silver, black, or white, and you could have that gray in there, right? If you want to differentiate between like the silver or that sort of thing. You know, I wanted to finish up this episode talking a little about goalie gear and other kind of equipment quirks that we've seen this season. Mike, why don't you get us started? All right. Good, good, good call, because I don't usually talk much about goalies, but I will say this, and there's something about the Calgary Flames that has bugged me a little bit over the years, and we've seen it again with Jacob Markstrom this season, because I really like Jacob Markstrom's new mask, but it follows a trend that we've seen with the Calgary Flames many times, and it's with goalies who decide to put the flaming C on their masks. They put them on both sides, and the one on the other side is backwards, and Jacob Markstrom's mask has a backwards C on it, and... It just bugs me every time I see it. And he's far from the first Flames goalie to do it. Jonas Hiller notably wore a mask when he was with Calgary that not only had the backwards C, it also had a lime green lining that was very distracting whenever you looked at it. But it is the most notable piece of goalie gear that I've seen this season because goalies just stop doing the backwards C. Put the regular (laughs) side, put the regular C on both sides. It's really not going to change much. Come on, we're we're a a weird breed. You know, we got to keep it that way, right? (laughs) So when they do press afterwards and they're looking at themselves with their helmet on, they can see it the right way. (laughs) (laughs) I got a list. Uh, I'll run through real quick. I got a lot of just things that I liked and good examples of goalie gear, in my opinion. Um, Fleury's brown pads with Chicago are unreal. He had the great gold pads with Vegas. He wore them full time last year. The guys got style, right? Like the brown pads are great. Um, Jonathan Quick. His chrome helmet looks sick. Um, I love when goalies coordinate their gear with alternate jerseys. Um, The Dallas Stars guys do a great job with that as well. John Gibson of the Anaheim Ducks has a Captain America mask. Um, This one is in my backyard. Uh, Matt Bialta of the Ontario Reign. He has some of the best pads I've seen on a Kings goalie uh, ever. He took the modern crown and split that up along the bottom of his pads kind of like the Vaughn iceberg pads 
and um, they look sick. So those are some of my favorites from this year. Man, I thought being the goalie on this panel, I would have been the one to be like, oh, this guy, this guy, this guy. But apparently it's Matt here. Um, you know, I'll, I'll stick with Anaheim here as well. Uh, you know, the, the John Gibson mask is absolutely amazing. The uh, Captain America. But, you know, you have Anthony Stolarz as well with the the chrome orange mask that he's got going on. It looks great, especially with the orange jerseys. It looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I'm going to head over to the Eastern Conference here and looking at both goalies of the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, with uh, Jari and DeSmith, both with the no white whatsoever in the pads look uh, and and flipping them on each other. Uh, you know, DeSmith with the, the yellow pads a bit more akin to very early on Marc-Andre Fleury, which Matt, I'm so happy you brought up uh, those those brown pads and just Fleury's got the style. All right. Fleury's yeah. got the style. And uh, but yeah, so those yellow pads and, you know, those black pads on Jari. They just they look menacing, right? The the whole talk uh, I remember earlier being you know don't wear dark based pads or that sort of thing. The whole reason to go towards white pads was because then you looked bigger and it was harder to differentiate between you know what was the ice, what was the board, and what was the neck kind of thing, and, the, and what was your pads. Um, personally, I found it doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot, honestly. And I tried a little bit of the reverse, actually, after listening to an interview with, uh, or, what, or reading an interview with Marc-Andre Fleury, where he's talking about those yellow pads being, that's the first thing that uh, your eye would register, actually, is that kind of yellow. Uh, I did a set of yellow pads myself, and I actually found I was making more saves because guys were just throwing it directly at it because that's where their eye would go first. So I love the idea of psychological manipulation happening with the color of, of a goalie's pads. <laughs> and, and you actually brought up a really good point. I was I actually wanted to ask you about sort of the theory behind colors because we used to see a lot more goalies in dark pads. And then nowadays it seems like they're all wearing white. So it was really interesting to hear you talk about that. Um, the one I wanted to bring up just because... I'm here in Seattle is Chris Streaker of the Kraken. He took the elements from the from the Kraken logo and really worked them into all the elements of his gear, which is I think they're really really nice. I'm glad you brought that one up because that was one I was thinking of, and I'm like, oh, I feel like Chris is going to want to say something about this. <laughs> I, I have a certain design that I like all my pads to kind of go over. I like more white than color. And okay. We sort of worked with the designer at Vaughn, and this is what we came up with. So I'm I'm really happy with how it turned out. Well, that seems like a, as good a place as any to wrap things up for this episode. Uh, thank you again to Nate, Matt, and Mike for being part of this episode of the Talk Back. Uh, we'll have them back soon. Thanks again, guys, and thank you for watching. Thanks for watching the Aesthetics YouTube channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, then turn on notifications to be the first to know about new video releases. That's all for now. See you next time.